Good morning and welcome to CMC Markets on Friday the 22nd of February and this quick look at the week ahead beginning the 25th of February. And been another fairly decent week for equity markets, the FTSE 100 notwithstanding, which had had a poor week. But uh, the S&P is headed towards that 2800 level and those three areas of resistance that I target, that I highlighted uh, a week or so ago that could be the next the key level for US equities. If we look at these peaks here in mid-October, um, the end of October and the middle of November, around about 2820, that's the next key resistance level for US stocks. If we look at the Germany 30 or the DAX, that is, approach, that is also approaching some key resistance levels. We're actually right on the cusp of it right now. Trend line resistance from the peaks last year between May and June, 13,170. That's currently, currently coming in around about 11,520. Um, and I think the gains that we're seeing in equity markets are coming despite further disappointing economic data. If you look at the data that we've seen coming out of Germany uh, this week, um, the picture for the German economy, particularly manufacturing, um, is getting an awful lot worse. Yes, it has been slightly offset by an improvement in services, but ultimately what we've seen um, over the course of the past week is lacklustre um, business sentiment continuing to deteriorate. PMIs, manufacturing PMIs, also slipping back to 47.6, the worst PMI number in over six years. And as we look ahead to the new week, the same concerns that have really, I think, been dogging markets for the last three or four weeks continue to act as a little bit of a wall of worry. If we look at Brexit talks, they're pretty much as they were, completely deadlocked, though we are approaching another key deadline on the 27th of February when Prime Minister, UK Prime Minister Theresa May will be looking to bring back a potential new deal. Um, I'm not sure how different it's going to be to the old deal, but it will be brought back to the UK Parliament, potentially for another meaningful vote. In the absence of that happening, we could see a number of amendments passed by MPs to try and avert the prospect of a no-deal Brexit. That still remains the default position. MPs are striving to make sure that is not on the table. But unfortunately, they're finding it very, very difficult to, make, to, get, to get a majority for doing that. With the result that we've seen, political, the, political, the big two political parties start to splinter um, into a new faction in the um, UK Parliament, which is very much a Remain-orientated faction, the independence group. And I think about the only thing they do have in common is they want to remain in the EU because that's exactly what we want, another Remain party. Um, the pound holding up fairly nicely, um, not really moving in one direction or the other. Um, I think the upside there once again is remaining constrained by the fact that there is still no prospect of any meaningful progress on the Brexit deal. But I think what is becoming increasingly apparent is that there will have to be an extension. Whether or not you think that it's likely, I think the fact is that given the amount of legislation that will be, have to be passed in the event of a deal, you will still need a extension to Article 50 to get the, the necessary legislation through the Parliament. So um, in terms of the pound against the dollar, if we look at cable, we're still pretty much in a range, but certainly in terms of where the price action is leading us, um, there is decent support around about 127.80, but there's also a decent area of resistance around about 132. But one thing I did, would say is that when I look at euro sterling, the outlook for euro sterling actually looks more negative for the euro than it does for the pound. Every single rebound that we've got off this very important support level at 86.20 has got an awful lot shallower, and that suggests to me that we could well see further sterling gains going forward. Now, putting aside, setting aside the political backdrop, that suggests to me that the pound could actually does have room to go higher against the euro. What the catalyst for that will be, it's hard to say, but certainly I think in terms of um, the German economy and the economic recovery in Europe, 
it's increasingly unlikely that the ECB will be able to tighten the monetary policy much further than it already has and ultimately the next move could well be an easing bias. And I think as we look to the back end of next week, which will be the 1st of March, and obviously that is also the trade deadline, um, and that is likely to be extended. I think it's highly unlikely that President Trump will increase the tariffs on Chinese goods when ultimately there is evidence that um, US-China trade negotiators are making progress. So I think it's likely that we will see an extension to that deadline given some of the smoke signals that have been coming from recent discussions as well as the chatter over various memoranda. Now, President Trump and China's top trade negotiator, Liu He, are meeting um, over the course of the next couple of days to assess the progress on the ongoing talks. And I think, given how close we are to that 1st of March deadline, I think it's highly, un I think it's highly likely that um, we will see an extension to that deadline, given recent comments by President Trump that ultimately he's not really wedded to a hard, um, a hard deadline. So um, that's um, that, that's the I think the outlook for, um, for 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 the for the next for the next week or so. Other th items to keep an eye out for are fourth quarter U.S. GDP. We've also got the latest Humphrey Hawkins testimony from Fed Chair Jerome Powell um, in light of the minutes that um, were released earlier this week where Fed officials, I think, made it quite clear that um, they weren't in any rush to raise rates any further. That being said, there was no evidence that they were looking to cut them either. So I think in terms of Fed policy, we're at neutral right now. And I think that's likely to keep any upside in the dollar fairly constrained. Obviously, when set against central bank policy elsewhere, which is likely to continue to remain easy. So we've also got the Bank of England inflation report hearings on Tuesday, the 26th of February. And that'll be another opportunity for MPs to quiz Bank of England Governor Mark Carney and other central bank officials on bank preparations for Brexit now that we're just over a month away. But also, I think, on the health or otherwise of the UK economy, which to all intents and purposes still looks in much better shape than the economy in Europe. And I think that's why you're seeing the pound look slightly more resilient um, against the euro. On the Friday, we've got global manufacturing PMIs, and they're likely to show a uh, little sign of any pickup um, over the course of the last month or so. Japanese manufacturing PMI was in contraction. German manufacturing PMI is in contraction. We did see a little bit of a pickup in French manufacturing PMI, but it was um, it was pretty feeble at best. And with China manufacturing likely to have been disrupted by the Chinese New Year. I think it's probably too soon to suggest that we'll see any evidence of a pickup in the manufacturing numbers. It's also a big week for earnings. Um, we've got full year results for ITV, Rolls Royce, um, Aston Martin Lagonda post its first IP, post IPO. Um, share price performance of Aston Martin Lagonda has been pretty disappointing um, in the wake of the IPO. Um, certainly, I think. Uh, uh, Obviously, the slowdown in China is not helping um, Aston Martin's numbers, but I can't help thinking that, given how far we've dropped, that an awful lot of the bad news there is likely to have been priced in. But again, it's very, very difficult looking at the auto market at the moment to suggest that there's any evidence of any basing out. What I would say is we do appear to have found support just above um, these twin lows here around about 1,100. So it'll be interesting to see whether or not those numbers um, actually um, surprise to the upside. Um, we've also got JCPenney and Nordstrom fourth quarter um, numbers for US retail and Canadian GDP on the 1st of March and Canadian inflation numbers on the 27th of February. So that's it for this week. Thank you very much for listening. It's Michael Houston talking to you from CMC Markets.